So what do you think of when you think of Facebook? A place to connect with your friends, to see your friends' photos, see lots of baby pictures, read articles. But Facebook is also an amazing games platform. And we work with gamers and game developers every single day to help them be successful. And so we're not just a social network, but we're actually a games platform with incredible reach and engagement. And I'm here to talk about how you can take that reach and engagement and make it work for you. So first, you know, we're here at Casual Connect to talk about games, but what you hear a lot is mobile, mobile, mobile. This is the future of where games is going, and rightfully so. Even on Facebook, 95% of mobile game apps have actually integrated Facebook login. It's really exciting. They're actually integrated with Facebook in order to make a better and richer experience over time. And that has increased their engagement. But beyond that, we also want to talk about Facebook.com. 375 million people play games with Facebook. And that is an amazing stat. Think of all of those people who are there looking for games, looking to discover games that you're creating, looking to share it with your friends, looking to find out about your latest content. That is what Facebook provides. And on Facebook.com, we have over 100 developers who made more than a million dollars last year. And we had the honor of processing over $3 billion in developer payments in 2013 and our ecosystem just continues to grow. We also have a large number of partners, such as Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation, who have a large number of players who are also integrated with our platform. But if you think about that in context, all of those combined is fewer than the number of people who play games with Facebook. And that's the power of the reach that our social network has. And on Facebook.com, we continue to attract really exciting titles, such as Marble Avengers and Fast and the Furious 6 and DreamWorks Dragons. This is a rich ecosystem of people coming, looking to engage with people, and looking to bring them really interesting and powerful content. The most important thing for you as a game developer is to start by reaching people where they are, where they want to play. And for that, you need to be cross-platform. Because they're on their mobile device, on the phone, on the train, on the way to work. They're at home, sitting in front of their television, playing with their iPad. They're also at work or at home, on their desktop, actually enjoying games as well. And you want to be a part of all of that. The thing that's really unique about Facebook's game platform is that it covers all of those things. Rather than being a silo of a single OS or a single device or single platform, we actually span, our platform spans across all platforms so that you can build games and engage with people where they are, whatever device they're playing on, or whether they're on web or mobile. And that's incredibly powerful because people want to play where they are. They're not thinking about platform or device or who they are at this moment. They're thinking about how do I engage the content in the most seamless way possible so I can pick up where I left off last time I left, left desktop, or the last time I left the train. And that's really powerful in how we can help you bring cross-platform to your games. Because one of the things that's really challenging is that, you know, people play where they are and they're not thinking about platforms, but we have to think about platforms. And so one of the things we did was we looked into what people do when they go from a single platform to a cross-platform play. And so here's some really interesting results. People who move from playing in a single platform to multiple platforms are seeing much, much more engagement. They're actually seeing 2.4x the engagement on mobile, 50% more engagement on desktop, and they're paying an astounding 3x more three times as much when you, they actually play cross-platform. And so you should be able to leverage that to your advantage. When mobile players come to Facebook.com to play, they're actually increasing their overall engagement 40%. Think about that. They're taking their engagement and actually spending so much more time because now they're seeing an integrated experience across multiple places. But those who stuck with mobile only, they're actually seeing an 8% decrease in game engagement. 
And that's the power of making sure you're, multi, you're actually in a cross-platform world. It's that you can increase your engagement not only in your core platform where you started, but in the next platform where you go. And overall, you're seeing engagement increase. And when players go from Facebook.com to mobile, again, they're seeing an overall engagement increase. This time, 21%. And when they stay on Facebook.com only, they're seeing a 10% decrease in overall engagement over this period. Think of how powerful that is. Just by being where people are, you can increase your overall engagement. You're probably wondering at this point, what can I do to actually be cross-platform? Because this is important. I want people to play more. I want them to engage more. I want them to pay more. How do I take advantage of this? We make that easy with our integration the Unity SDK. And so we have the Facebook SDK for Unity, which helps you bring your game cross-platform. And we've developed this with you in mind so that you can have the same experience and launch on both mo on mobile platforms as well as Facebook.com. We also have Parse, which helps you port your game cross-platform. It's also integrated with the, S the Unity SDK where you can store data, you can manage your players, you can manage your notifications. That way, you're thinking about building amazing game experiences rather than thinking about storage and management and maintenance. So now that you've decided to build cross-platform because you're going to get better players, more engaged, you need to bring people to your game itself. And so how do you grow your game? How do you bring new players to come engage in this experience that you've invested all this time building? One is organically. Clearly, word of mouth is very, very important in games. People play games because they've heard about it. That's always going to be a part of the ecosystem and part of the experience, and you should leverage that whenever possible. And two is to pay for an audience, to reach an audience through paid ads so that you can actually reach the audience you specifically need and want for your game. And we provide those tools. So getting discovered by the right people, you know, having people invite their friends, that's a simple way for people to have a much more engaging experience. A lot of you have built really interesting experiences that help peers play with each other, having friends invite each other. And that's a powerful experience that you can take advantage of on Facebook. We make all those tools available for you for free. There's also new ways to get discovered. Recently, we started testing the Facebook for iPad, you can see games experience really deeply integrated in. And in order to be featured here, all you need to do is have an App Center video on Facebook and be Facebook Connect uh, login integrated or have a Canvas presence. And so you can actually offer this deep experience where people can learn more about your game and engage without too much effort. But you know, one of the things we hear from developers is it's great, we can get people to invite, but how do we scale? How do we bring a large number of people? How do we bring profitable people into our game? You know, we hear this a lot because developers are kind of fighting for mind share. I mean, you're talking about two million apps out there, and you're trying to find an audience. And that's why we built the mobile app ads product, actually with feedback from a lot of you in the audience. And we built this product to really help you find the specific audience that's going to help your app grow. Find the right audience for your genre, for your type of app, for the kinds of things that you're trying to build and the audience you're trying to reach. And we've reached, we've actually um, driven 350 million paid installs since the start of this program. And actively, 60% of top grossing apps in both app stores actively use this ad product. This is so powerful because we have the best tools possible for you to find your audience. So there are things like demographic and behavioral targeting. You're looking for people who use Unity, play consoles. You're looking for people who love games. You're looking for people who are excited about the content that you have. Sure, we have age, geo, gender, that's great, but we also have mobile targeting. So you can actually find people on tablets, for example, or you can find people who love to play console games. We also have really powerful things like custom audiences. You can actually give us a list of the players in your game that are engaging and paying, and you say, I want more people like this. You give us a custom audience, we can help reach them, or you can say, give me more people like my best players, the ones that come six out of the seven of the last days, and we will find lookalikes for you. 
You don't need to know anything about these people. You just need to tell us who they are, we match them in our system, and then we automatically find people just like them for you. So you can find highly engaged players for your game. And today, we're really excited to announce that we're having, we are launching device targeting. And so, for example, Machine Zone, you know, they actually have a really high-end game that plays well on high-end devices. So, you know, if they're looking for people like Samsung Galaxy Note players, you know, they're going to get better monetization from a high-end device because the performance is optimized for the type of game that they're going to offer. And so they can actually bid and find customers in that base. So rather than just targeting people who, say, are on Android or people who use tablets, they can actually finally target by device, understand the ROI model for that specific device, and bid and be more successful in the long term. And so if you have a, if you have a game that's really played best on a large tablet, you can target, say, iPad Air, maybe the latest device, because that's where the performance is going to be great. Or maybe a mid-sized tablet works for you. That's awesome as well. Or maybe you just want to have the, the iPhone 5 and above. Those are all now available, and it's really powerful because then you can get the best performance, and you can find the right people to play. And so we're really excited to make that announcement today, and you can start using it nearly immediately. We also have all of these tools for Facebook.com as well. So when you bring your, your app or your game cross-device, you can actually make use of all of these tools for Facebook.com so you can find a profitable audience to continue to grow your game and your ecosystem. And that brings us to the most important thing, which is not only are you building beautiful and engaging games, you're building businesses. And that's very important. So it's great to have a very, very large user base of players, but you need a large user base of payers as well. And so how do you turn players into payers? This is really, really important. How do you make sure that you're continuously monetizing so that you can invest in growing your game, you can invest in that designer to make that next level, you invest in those engineers to build your next game? We do that with a few things. So one is re-engaging your players. You guys all have apps that have lots of players and payers who have lapsed, right? They're not coming back. Maybe they're coming back less. So what you can do is what Nordius did, which is actually targeting payers from the past and bringing them back. When they did this, they saw a 500% return on ad spend. That is so powerful because you're targeting just the people that are most valuable to you. You're growing your ecosystem with the people who you have in the past have had a paying relationship with, and being able to bring them back. You know, they're on Facebook, they're scrolling through newsfeed, they're spending 17% you know, of their time on Facebook. So bringing them back through an ad unit that says, hey, come back right now and play, that's really, really powerful. A couple weeks ago, we also launched a new product where you can actually run inline sales in newsfeed. So imagine that you're a game and you just want to reach people who are playing your game, and you want to turn them into payers. So rather than bringing, running an ad to bring them to your game, and then in your game turning them to payers, you can actually run a targeted sale. So rather than just running a sale in your entire game, you actually can run a very targeted sale to people you really care about and want to turn into payers. Kixi tested with us early on, and they saw a 10% click-through rate on an ad unit for their payers, and 50% conversion rate on the payment. 50%. And for new payers, they saw a 1.4% click-through rate and a 14% payment rate. That's astounding. They actually got a 5,000% return on ad spend on this ad unit when they tested with us. And we're really excited to make that available to all of you because these are people who are on the cusp of paying in your game. They want to, they're engaged. You're targeting the people who care most about your game. And you can run this targeted sale so it's right there in front of them. And it's a really simple process so that they don't get distracted by other things. They see the ad unit, they click, they buy. And it's so targeted, you don't have to disrupt all your other players with the sale. And it gives you an opportunity to really run sales that are going to be targeted to the people you most care about converting. Beyond that, we have our mobile app events product. So when someone comes to your app, you just put in a few lines of code, and you can actually log things that are happening. So for example, people who achieve a certain level. You know, maybe people who come visit six out of the last seven days. Or people who 
invoked the payment dialogue, or things like have actually paid. These are really powerful because these are signals that you need to make your game successful. And when you take those signals, we can give you more information about what those people are. So like, for example, who these people are matters. Maybe you have a pretty wide base of, of players, but the actual people who pay are a very small number of people with a specific demographic targeting you just didn't know anything about. We can make that available to you. Or maybe there are a lot of people invoking the payment dialogue of not getting through. Really understanding who those people are and actually getting them. They're on the cusp of actually making a purchase. You can actually target specifically to those people. Because what we do is we make this available so that you can actually take this information and automatically set up targeted ads. So custom audiences are automatically created for you, and you can just run ads directly against these events. And so you don't have to think about who are these people, how do I target them, how do I find people more like them. This is all set up. All you have to do is log the events from your app, and when you come to the advertising system, you can actually pull in all this information to create custom audiences to reach people, or you can actually say, you know what, I want to target specifically people who look just like the people who are paying my app. And I'll show you an example in a second. But the other thing to remember is bringing people back to your app. Because you know, every day people are turning, right? They are playing your game, they're lapsing, they're playing your game, they're moving on to other things. So how do you re-engage players and payers? We have a really powerful product that does that. So in your newsfeed, we can actually show you a game that you've already played in the past and bring you back to that experience. And we've seen really powerful results with this because you're bringing people back who are already familiar with your brands, and you're getting a second wind out of that relationship. And so we encourage you to test this as well because this is a really interesting way to bring back people who may have lapsed from your app. You know, everyone talks about payers. And you know, one of the industry stats we've seen is this, which is 0.15% of payers are actually accounting for 50% of monetization in in-app purchases. That is a very small group of people that you're hunting for every single day. And what we want to do is help you find them. And so here, oh, sorry. So here you can see this is an app. And you know, you basically logged all your purchase events. And so we make it super easy for you to actually say, you know what, I want to find that 0.15% in my app. And so you can actually say, you know what, these are my best payers. Find more people like them. Make it really easy. Bring those people to my game. And that way, it's really powerful for you to be able to find exactly the right people. You don't need to know anything about them. You don't need to know their geo, gender, age, anything about them. All you need to know is that these are my best payers, and I want more like that. And then test your return on ad spend. It's really, really simple. Just click that button, and everything is set up for you. But beyond in-app purchases, there's also ads monetization. We recently announced at F8 the audience network. And what's great about the audience network is it helps our advertisers reach out to the, no the, the millions of apps out there and actually grow their base of people they can advertise to. But for you as app developers, what's really powerful is it's not just a one-size-fits-all ad network. It is not just people buying chunks of your inventory but instead it's really focused specifically on your audience. And so, you can see here, you know, somebody who likes Frozen, for example. You can see, we will find that person in your app. You don't have to wonder who that person is or what that demographic is. It's done for you. So when our million advertisers comes to our ecosystem and sets up campaigns, they're looking for a specific audience. And rather than just offering them everyone, we actually say, you know what? This person is better off seeing a Frozen ad and this other person is better off seeing a Coca-Cola ad. And this final person is better off seeing a Game of Thrones ad. We match them to your audience as opposed to just the device. We're actually looking for people's interest. We're looking for who they are. And we're helping them find their interest through the ads. And so you get better click-through rates and you get better monetization in the long term. But the added benefit is rather than being a disruptive part of the experience, we can actually make it integrated into your game. So yes, we have ban banners, we have interstitials, which are an important part of game monetization. But you see in the last one, Cut the Rope by Zepto, they've actually integrated the ad into the game experience. So it's a really natural part of the game. And it feels so much more native and so much more part of the experience. 
So the three things I hope you take away today is that it is really important to build cross-platform. It is really important to be where people are. Go to where your game players are and help them play so that they're actually growing your cross-device. They're actually seeing you where they want to be. They're having an integrated experience. And we help you do that with the Facebook and Unity SDKs and the Parse SDKs as well. The second one is find out who they are. Log app events from your mobile app. And so you understand what people are doing. And then you can find out who's doing what. And you can make your experience better. If you can find out that you know, people who reach a certain level or people who churn are a certain demographic, you can actually improve your experience over time. You can improve your ads targeting, improve your invites flows. These are all really important. You can do that through logging app events. And finally, sign up for the audience network. Learn more about our audience network. You can see here at fbe.me at, at audience network. But get an integrated ads experience into your app and have a much better advertising experience for people in your app and grow your monetization as well. And so with that, I'd like to invite Philip to talk to you about some of the tips and tricks to be more successful. Cool, thanks Deb. Okay, hi guys, I'm Phil Hewinson, a partner engineer at Facebook. Meet Trevor. Trevor is 25 and a half years old. He lives in Fargo in North Dakota, so a few hundred miles up that way. Uh, he actually lives with his uh, mum and dad. Uh, he works at a local library, uh, earning around $3.20 an hour. Uh, he has a few friends uh, that he knows from high school. They stay close. Uh, they like playing computer games together, and they read comics together. Uh, and his favorite food is pizza. Meet Smart Game Studios and Tragic Game Studios. These two guys are in head-to-head -head battle against each other. They produce games that are perfect for Trevor. Because Trevor is the perfect player for their games. In fact, it's not just about Trevor in Fargo, North Dakota. It's about all the Trevors in the world. Every Trevor is perfect for the types of games they produce. So they're fighting head-to-head -to, -head to get every single Trevor to play their games. Now let's fast forward, it's January 2015. Trevor is excited. He's excited for two reasons. Number one, the second most important event of the year has just happened for him, Christmas. And why is Christmas important? Because he gets Christmas gifts from his parents and some of his close friends. And recently, he just, for last, this last Christmas just passed, he just got a new Android phone, which is a major upgrade. You know, he's used to the, the, this feature phone that he has that does uh, voice calls and SMS. Now he can play games on his phone. Imagine how excited Trevor is. Now, Smart Game Studios and Tragic Game Studios are also pretty excited too, because they're about to launch their two new hits, Smarty Pants and Tragic Trousers. Can you imagine? These guys have been working for the last six months producing these games, and they want to find Trevor to play them. And so Trevor's the perfect player for them, and they're fighting hard to try and get him to play their games. Now let's rewind six months. Casual Connect 2014 here in SF. Both Smart Game Studios and Tragic Game Studios were invited. Unfortunately, Tragic Game Studios turned down the invitation. They were too busy and Smart Game Studios turned up. So Smart Game Studios got to hear all of the top tips from Facebook. Tragic Game Studios unfortunately missed out. And so while they were developing their games over the next six months, Smarty Pants had all of the top tips from Facebook incorporated into it. Tragic Trousers unfortunately didn't. Let's see how it turned out for both of them. So I'm gonna share with you six secret top tips that we as a games company, as a, as a games team within Facebook, have uh, come up with that hopefully will uh, help you guys um, with the games that you have today. And they're all focused around three pillars, building your cross-platform game, growing it, and then monetizing it. And so it all links back to uh, what Je Deb just told you about, about the importance of building a cross-platform game, how to grow it with the Facebook products, and then how to monetize it. So let's firstly focus on building your cross-platform game. Two top tips. Number one, pass. So Pass, as Deb said, is a, a suite of um, services and tools that you can use 
that will help you accelerate the building of your mobile game. It includes products like storing data into the cloud with just a couple of lines of code without having to specify a database schema or anything. It includes um, push notifications. So you can send push notifications to all your audience uh, and segment them based on uh, various attributes, like the level they've got to. Uh, and also it includes an analytics product as well. How do you use Pass well? Firstly, just sign up for it. Sign up for free on pass.com. Then you can start to add user data to pass. So that could be the state uh, of, of players in the game, whether it's the level they got to, the score they've achieved, uh, or, or whatever else you need to save. But uh, it's just a couple of lines of code, and you can save whatever you want into the pass cloud. And then finally, you can segment your users for push. So based on that data that you stored in pass, say, um, say uh, players' levels, then you can segment push notifications based on that data. So uh, for every, for example, every player that's got to level 20, you can send them a push notification. Maybe it's for lapsed players that haven't played in the last seven days. You can send them a push notification really easily using the uh, UI that Pass provides. And this is a great example from Playtica, House of Fun. Um, if you're in the session before uh, that Playtica ran, uh, uh, you'll have heard about House of Fun. And they have a great use of Pass inside of the game. Uh, they use Pass Core to, to store data. And they have a fantastic use of Pass Push, where they send push notifications to their players, segmented based on the data that they store back. And they also use Pass Analytics as well. So let's get back to Trevor. Fast forward again. It's January 2015. And Trevor's excited because it's just after Christmas and he's got his new Android phone and he wants to find out what games he can play on it. He just discovered that you can actually play games. He thought it was just a normal phone that you can make phone calls, but actually there's a whole suite of games on there. Who knew? Now, smart game studios were pretty smart. They turned up to Casual Connect, they heard the Facebook talk, and they used Pass to build their game. And so what they did is they managed to accelerate the speed at which they could uh, launch their game. And so they were able to launch on iOS and on Android at the same time. And so when Trevor went along to Google Play on his Android phone, he saw Smarty Pants in the top new free games. And so he downloaded it, started playing it. And so fantastic, Smart Game Studios acquired a Trevor because they managed to get it on Android and iOS at the same time because they used Pass, which accelerated their process of building the game. Unfortunately, Tragic Game Studios didn't know about Pass because they didn't turn up to Casual Connect. And so they did everything themselves. And they weren't able to launch an Android quick enough. And so they didn't appear in the Google Play Store. And Trevor didn't know about Tragic Trousers. So tragically, they didn't get that Trevor in Fargo. Top tip number two about building your cross-platform game. Mobile to desktop synchronization. So Deb talked about building a cross-platform game and showed some metrics about the increase in engagement if you build a cross-platform game across uh, desktop and also across mobile. Now, you'll, you'll be able to achieve some much better engagement metrics if it's fully synchronized, because a fully synchronized experience for a user is a lot more compelling. Because imagine if you're playing a game on mobile and then you start playing on facebook.com the same game. If you have to start again and you lose all of your game state, uh, you're less likely to be engaged, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to be less likely to play it. But if your game state gets synchronized across everywhere, a player can just pick up any device, any platform they're on, and start playing the game and pick up where they left off, and they're more likely to stay engaged. How do you do a good job of that? Number one, you um, prior have a prominent Facebook login on all of your platforms. So that's important. Um, you, you need like a login with Facebook buttons so that a user then logs into, your, into Facebook in your game, and you can identify who they are, which means that um, you can then synchronize their game state wherever they are, because you know who they are. Number two, synchronize the player state across devices. And then finally, um, encourage people to play on different platforms. They may not know that the game exists on Android, so tell them about it. Encourage them to go to Android and check out the game. And then once they discover it, they'll be more likely to engage more in your game because they'll realize they can play it more often on the device that they choose that they most prefer. And this is a great example from Wooga in Jelly Splash, uh, where they have a fantastic uh, synchronized cross-platform experience in the game. So let's get back to Trevor then. What happened with Trevor in this situation? Now, you know, Trevor works in um, a local library. Now, this local library, I don't know about the, library, uh, the libraries in your local towns. Most of you probably never go to a library. Uh, but Trevor 
does. He works in a library, one of the main libraries in Fargo, North Dakota. And that library has a computer room with a single computer. Now, um, Trevor uh, has got into the habit in his um, toilet breaks and his tea breaks and his lunch breaks of sneaking into the computer room so he can play computer games. Uh, often he tries to do it discreetly because it's frowned upon. Um, but he, you know, he, he, he gets away with it most of the time and that's what he spends as much time as possible doing because he loves computer games. Now, Smart Game Studios built their game cross-platform and fully synchronized. So Trevor discovered the game on the library computer, on facebook.com, and it was fantastic. He found Smarty Pants on a 24-inch monitor. Imagine the size of those pants. He got extremely excited about playing Smarty Pants on such a big monitor and such an engaging experience. But what was better, on his way home as he was driving his uh, banged-up pickup truck uh, through the snowy roads in Fargo towards his home, he then picked up his Android phone and started playing Smarty Pants on his Android phone. And he picked up from the level he left off at. He managed to squeeze in two hours of gameplay into his um, Tuesday afternoon at the local library. So he scored 304 points. So when he picked up his Android phone, it picked up from where he left off and he carried on playing. He thought, fantastic, the 304 pants that he collected, he can keep collecting more pants on his Android game. How exciting for him. Tragically, Tragic Game Studios didn't turn up to Casual Connect. They didn't know about the importance of building a synchronized cross-platform game. And unfortunately, while the game existed on Facebook.com and also on Android, they managed to launch the, the game on Android by early February at this point, it wasn't synchronized. And so tragically, even though Trevor enjoyed playing Tragic Trousers at the local library, when he started playing it on his Android phone on the way home, he had to start again. How disappointing. All those trousers he's collected, the 200 pairs, all vanished, all gone, and he had to start again. And he got so annoyed, he just threw his phone out of the window. And he lost it. So tragically, not only did he lose all of his trousers, he lost his phone. I mean, this is his new smartphone. He had to go back to his feature phone. And he couldn't afford a new Android phone. I mean, you know, he only earns $3.20 an hour. He asked for a pay rise to see if he could expedite buying a new phone, but they turned him down, and he almost lost his job. I mean, tragically, not only did he lose the trousers and lose his phone, he almost lost his job. This is not a good day for Trevor. So because of the synchronized cross-platform experience non existing in tragic trousers, Trevor had a particularly bad day. Okay, let's look at a couple of top tips on growing your cross-platform game. Top tip number three, App Center videos. You heard about App Center videos from um, Deb's talk, and they're, they're important for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, having an App Center video helps uh, people that look for your game more likely to try out your game and convert. So the, uh, having a Facebook App Center page enables people to find your game. Facebook App Center is an area inside of Facebook.com that shows all of the games on Facebook.com. And you can have a presence there. And not only can you have a presence there, but you can, instead of just having normal images, you can have a video, an engaging video, that will then mean that people that visit your page will more likely convert and actually try out your game. How do you make a good App Center video? So, number one, keep it short. Ideally, keep it less than 30 seconds. Keep it as, um, so, sorry, describe the game features. So what makes your game unique? And try and bring that out in the video. And then finally, keep it entertaining. Uh, this is a really good example from Double Down Casino. Uh, it's around 30 seconds long, and it's really uh, entertaining and high quality. And it's a good example of how to build a good App Center video. So let's fast forward. Uh, we're now in kind of mid-February. It's actually February 14th. And February 14th is the most exciting day of the year for Trevor. Uh, can you guess why? Nope, it's not because it's Valentine's Day. As you can imagine, Trevor um, isn't very successful with the ladies. Um, but he does have another special event on the 14th of February. It's his birthday. And his birthday is even better than Christmas because his parents really treat him. Um, they treat him like crazy. They buy him an amazing gift every single time he has a birthday. And as you can imagine, and in $3.20 an hour, um, which was a recent pay rise, by the way, he was on $3 an hour a year before. Um, he doesn't really, he can't really save much money to buy himself things. Um, he puts most of it into the fuel that gets guzzled up by his banged up pickup truck that he drives to and from work. And so the gifts that he gets on his birthday are particularly exciting. And what does he get on February the 14th, 2015? He gets an iPad. 
Can you imagine? I mean, he's just lost his Android phone. He's got nothing to play games with to and from work. Um, and so now he's got an iPad with a big HD screen. How exciting for him. So the first thing he does is go to the Facebook app to catch up with the four or five friends that he has in Fargo. And on the right-hand side, he sees an entertainment and games column, which is very interesting. And so he starts scanning through it. And interestingly, Smart Game Studios, in their smartness, because they turned up to Casual Connect and they heard about this top tip number three, they created an app center video for their games, for their game Smarty Pants. And so Trevor was scrolling through the right-hand panel and he comes across Smarty Pants. Ah, he, gets, he almost gets so excited, he drops his iPad. Smarty Pants, he loves that game, but he hasn't had the opportunity to play it, apart from at work on the library computer. So all of a sudden, he can start playing Smarty Pants on the iPad. And uh, that's because Smart Game Studios had an app sensor video. And, uh, and the games that appear in the right-hand column on the iPad have to have an app sensor video. Now, tragically, Tragic Game Studios didn't know about that. They didn't have an app sensor video. Tragic Trousers didn't appear on the iPad right-hand bar. And unfortunately, Trevor never found, about, found out about Tragic Trousers inside the iPad. And so they lost another Trevor. Top tip number four about growing a cross-platform game, explicit sharing. Now, explicit sharing is all about having a share button inside of your game. And you should have a share button in places where players feel most accomplished about achieving something really amazing in the game. So maybe they've got to level 50 in your game. Then if that's a really great accomplishment, have a share button. And when they hit that share button, it creates a news feed story that will appear on of their friends' news feeds, which means that their friends can then discover the game. Or if they've already discovered it, it's more likely to bring them back into the game to play it again. How do you do a good job of explicit sharing? Number one, mark your stories as explicit. So if you've used sharing at all in Facebook and created what's called open graph stories, then when you create those actions to define those stories, make sure you mark them as explicit. That's an important step so that, you, that you, you can then create explicit stories. Secondly, uh, it's important to uh, show a share button um, in the game. And so what you should do there is um, show a share button also with a clear opt-out in the game so that people can share, but they're not forced to share, so they can opt out if they need to. And then finally, uh, have a few high-quality stories. Don't pepper them all over your game. Uh, just have a few areas that people will feel most excited about sharing, and make sure the stories are high-quality, both for the sender, so they feel proud about sharing those stories with their friends, but also for the recipients. Maybe they'll get shown to people who've never heard of the game. Make sure the stories make sense for those people. And this is a great example inside the game Klondike, by Visor Interactive. So let's fast forward to Trevor. Now, it's kind of um, late February 2015. Trevor's really, really got into Smarty Pants now. He's been playing it like crazy. And thankfully, Smart Game Studios and their smartness had explicit sharing inside of Smarty Pants. And so Trevor had the opportunity to share his most amazing achievement, which was the collection of 1,000 pants. He managed to get to this point on um, February the 27th, 2015. And he was so excited. It was 3 p.m. And he finally collected his thousandth pair of pants. And then there was an amazing share dialogue that appeared. And of course, he wanted to share the story with his friends. This was his, frankly, this was actually the most proud moment of his life. Um, you know, he managed to get his way through high school. He got the job at the local library. But this achievement was the achievement of all time. And he had the opportunity to share it with his friends. And so all of his friends found the story and started playing it. All of his friends all over Fargo, all eight of them, all of his entire friendship network saw that story. And they, and they started playing Smarty Pants, and then they started sharing. And then it went to all of his friends' friends. And the game went crazy and viral. Unfortunately, though, Tragic Game Studios didn't know about explicit sharing because they didn't turn up to this session at Casual Connect 2014. And so they didn't put share buttons when Trevor managed to reach 200 pairs of trousers. And so unfortunately, he didn't manage to share that accomplishment with his friends, and his friends never found out about Tragic Trousers, and so his friends never played their game. And finally, let's look at two top tips on how to monetize your cross-platform game. Top tip number five, localization and segmentation. You heard a little bit about this at the uh, Platica session at 12 o'clock. 
uh, about uh, localization. It's all about um, localization and segmentation. It's all about creating an experience that's tailored to the players in your game. That could be about localization, uh, translating the text um, within your game. Uh, also, what's talked about um, by Playtaker was about culturalization, which is part of it too. And also, segmentation is about um, picking segments of users and giving them a tailored experience, whether that's for a group of payers, a group of laps players, or whatever else. How do you do it well? So firstly, for localization, translate uh, the, the UI dialogues, the text elements um, uh, within your game uh, to the local language of the players playing the game. And also the price points as well. So you know, if you have price points um, for British people, then in this example, which is in Stormfall, it's good to put the prices in pounds sterling. And likewise for the local markets where your players are playing the game. And then secondly, provide a localized community support. Now this requires more investment, um, but uh, if you want to be really successful with localizing your game for certain markets, then have localized community support so people can ask questions. So say, if you have players in China, they can ask questions in Chinese and you can respond in Chinese. Like I say, this requires more investment, but if you're really serious about localizing your game for certain markets, then this is also important. And then secondly, uh, sorry, this game is from uh, Plarium, who do a fantastic job of localizing all of their content across all of their games, including Stormfall. And then segmentation, how do you do that well? So firstly, tailor your pricing tables. Uh, so in here, uh, this is a criminal case, and this is the pricing table that players see when they first go into the game. As you can see, there are low price points, so 99 pence at the top for a British player. Uh, but as they become more engaged in the game and they spend more money, they get different pricing tables like this one, where the prices are inverted, and there's a new higher price point of 79.99 because they're more likely to spend that much money, and, and they'll get bigger discounts. And so you can monetize them better by segmenting payers uh, based on how often and how engaged they are. And then secondly, um, it's good to show offers to um, users that are not likely to convert into payers. Um, so uh, every game often there's, there's a point, maybe it's after eight days or 10 days or 12 days, where if they haven't paid yet, they're really unlikely to ever pay. Figure out when that is in your game and then offer them a really great offer that's um, more likely to convert them into payers. And again, if they still don't pay, consider monetizing them in different ways, maybe using ads to get value from them. And this example is from Pretty Simple, uh, who make Criminal Case. So, Trevor. What happened with Trevor? Well, now we're, we're fast forwarding now to um, mid-March 2015. And uh, as you can imagine, Trevor's really got into smarty pants now. You know, he dreams about pants. He's collected so many pants, he's been dreaming about them. Um, unfortunately, though, he had a hiccup around March 7th where he, he wasn't on form and he started losing pants in the game. And he went all the way down to zero pants, which was tragic. He was like, I've got no pants left. How can I get more pants? Now, fortunately, Smart Game Studios had an in-game bank that enabled him to buy pants inside the game. And so Trevor was a bit reluctant of spending his hard-earned money on buying stuff inside of a game. But he decided, okay, I'll take a step. And so he took a step, and he bought a pair of pants for 10 cents. And he was excited. He got a pair of pants. And these weren't just normal pants. These were golden pants because he bought them in the game. So he had a pair of golden pants. And then he got into buying golden pants, and he bought more and more. And over time, he actually built up a collection of pants, and he wanted to buy a lot more than he could. And so in time, the pricing table changed because Smart Game Studios heard about this top tip and decided to segment their audience and offer different pricing tables based on how engaged the pairs were. And so they showed this pricing table where instead of buying one pair of pants for 10 cents, they inverted it, added new prices. Now he could buy a million golden pants for $100. I can see the excitement on your faces. A million golden pants. Seriously. I mean, Trevor was slightly more excited than what I'm seeing here in the audience. But just try and step back for a second. A million golden pants. I'm not getting the reaction I expected. <laughs> I mean, I was amazed when I heard about this. Anyway, he decided he wants a million golden pants. Whatever it takes, he's going to make it happen. How can he afford a million golden pants for $100, though? Seriously, $3.20 an hour, he puts 90% of that into his fuel, and he still wants to have some money left over for pizza. So he figured, okay, he'll go on a diet from pizza, save up a bit of money that way. Uh, he then uh, 
managed to um, borrow a metal detector from um, one of his friends. And he went scouring around the streets of Fargo in the snow trying to find coins. And he managed to pick up a few quarters, which was pretty good. So he was on his way towards $100, still a little ways to go. He took an extra job in a local takeaway. Uh, they offered him $3 an hour, which wasn't bad. It was close to his local library salary, but it was incremental uh, income to him. So he managed to get more income that way, which is exciting. So off he went, and then he managed to um, uh, get his friends involved and get his friends to contribute as well so they could share the glory of these million golden pants. And in the end, he reached his target. He had all this cash, and he wanted to buy these pants with his cash. But it uh, turns out... Um, Android, um, iOS, and Facebook.com don't accept cash. You can't really buy things with cash. You know, the computer doesn't take it. Um, he was trying to stuff it into the uh, CD drive, but it didn't work. So anyway, uh, he figured out, OK, I'll find another way. So he went to his bank. Um, he gave the cash, and then he managed to pay using his debit card. Fantastic. He bought a million golden pants. This is now the best day of his life. He had a million golden pants. Now. Uh, and on top of that, Smart Game Studios managed to make quite a bit of money from Trevor, and everybody was happy. Unfortunately, though, Tragic Game Studios didn't know about segmentation or localization, so they didn't segment their audience. So even though Trevor did get into Tragic Trousers, he couldn't spend more than uh, a couple of dollars in the game because they didn't offer him higher price points. And so he never really ended up buying lots and lots of pairs of purple trousers. Finally, top tip number six on how to monetize. The audience network. Now, the audience network, as Deb said, is a way as publishers, so there's advertisers and publishers, but as publishers, as owners of apps, you can have Facebook ads inside of your game. And so Facebook ads are highly relevant and targeted because they make use of the million advertisers on the Facebook platform using all of the targeting capabilities. And so what you can have is ads that are really relevant for the players in your game. How do you do it? Firstly, sign up to the beta. Go to this link, fb.me slash audience dash network. Sign up for the beta. You can do this right now, and then we'll uh, check out your application. And if you're approved, then you can choose one of three ad units. You can have all of them if you want, banner ads, interstitial ads, and native ads. And then you can integrate. Integration takes probably less than a day. One of our um, uh, publishers that integrated said it took them five minutes. And it, it was easier than any other ad network integration. So it's really straightforward. And this is a really good example of a native ad. Native ads enable you to control the appearance of an ad. So you can make it look really cool within the chrome of your game. And this example is from Cut the Rope, written by um, Zepta Lab. So Trevor. The last final story about Trevor and the audience network. Now, Smart Game Studios knew about the audience network because they turned up to this talk. And so they decided to in implement the audience network into their game. And so Trevor started seeing these really relevant ads. He was already spending money, but he was happy to see these ads because they were about pants. Not only could he buy gold and virtual pants, he could now buy offline thermal pants, which were especially useful in the cold, wintry weather of Fargo in North Dakota. They were thermal, they were thick. Some of them were even heated. They cost extra, but he was happy to pay the money. And so now, instead of freezing uh, in his uh, banged up pickup truck to and from his local library, he could then have some warmth in his thermal pants, which is particularly exciting for him. Unfortunately, though, Tragic Game Studios, they had ads in their game, Tragic Trousers, but they weren't very relevant because they didn't implement the Facebook audience network. So there were ads about sunglasses for Trevor and things like... Um, uh, you know, th things like beach balls, uh, things about the beach and about the sunshine. Um, they, they had ads about shorts. I mean, Trevor doesn't even know what a pair of shorts is. You know, th this is Fargo in North Dakota. The, the, the weather's so cold, nobody has a pair of shorts. And yet he saw ads about shorts. Again, he was so annoyed about seeing these completely irrelevant ads that he didn't understand. He threw his new Android phone, which his parents bought him a second one, back out the window again. He lost another Android phone over irrelevant ads. How tragic. And so unfortunately, Tragic Game Studios uh, didn't make very much money from ads with Trevor. So we're going to fast forward. It's July 2015. And what happened? Well, Tragic Game Studios, I mean, they, they did get a Trevor. And they got a few more Trevors playing Tragic Trousers, which is quite good. But because they didn't follow Facebook's top tips, they started losing Trevors. They didn't really make any money from Trevor. And unfortunately, over time, well, they went bankrupt, sadly. Tragically, Tragic Game Studios is no more because they didn't turn up to Casual Connect and they didn't follow Facebook's top tips. What happened to Smart Game Studios? Well, 
They acquired Trevor's at the rate of knots because they implemented all of Facebook's top tips. They had explicit sharing, so they reached out to Trevor's network. They have App Center videos, so they appeared inside of the iPad Facebook app. They had all sorts of things, and they acquired Trevor's. Not only did they acquire all the Trevor's in North Dakota, they tried all the Trevor's all over the world. Every Trevor in the world ended up playing uh, smarty pants, and they loved it. And not only that, they made loads of money from the Trevors all over the world. And the Trevors wanted to spend money. They wanted the golden pants. They wanted the thermal uh, pants offline through the re very relevant ads through the audience network. And so they made a heap load of cash, cash that wiggled, exciting cash, all sorts of cash. It was incredible. It was just absolutely incredible completely unheard of, the next big hit, way beyond even Candy Crush. It was completely remarkable. And Smart Game Studios ended up going IPO, and every employee became a billionaire. Even the, lo even the, the cleaner that came in on the weekend was a billionaire because she was given a few stock of the company. It was just magical. They were the talk of the town. It was incredible. And it's because they followed the six Facebook top tips. And fast forward to Casual Connect, July 2015. This time next year, Smart Game Studios were invited, and they turned up, and they were the poster child. Everyone was talking about them. They were doing all the Q&As. Everybody wanted to replicate their success. And Tragic Game Studios, they were given an invitation, but the invitation fell on the doorstep of their office in Minneapolis. And the office was closed and shuttered because they were bankrupt, because they didn't follow the Facebook top tips. Okay, let's get back down to Earth. I may have exaggerated just a little bit uh, in this talk, and. I'm, I'm not actually suggesting that if you follow these top tips, you're going to see you know, completely incredible success, and you'll be IPOing within a year, making billions and billions of wiggly cash. Um, but uh, we do hope that, if, uh, that these top tips will hopefully provide some incremental value to your business, that you'll find some value in them that um, hopefully if you follow one or two of them, or maybe all of them, if they're relevant for your game and, uh, and the games that you're developing, we hope they'll bring you some uh, extra success. So. Um, Thanks for your time. This is our booth. We're over in booth number 203. We have the entire US games team from Facebook there. So if you have any questions at all, come and find us, and Deb and I will be around for any questions you have uh, after this talk. Thanks.